Hello everyone and welcome back to the D Heart House. My name is Alicia and this is my channel all about the crafty things that I like to do and make and create and share with you. So welcome if you're a new viewer and of course welcome back if you're a returning viewer. I'm so I do have this YouTube channel here where I talk about the things that I've created. You can also follow me on Instagram at D Heart House. Uh, for more regular doses of what I'm working on, some progress pictures and things like that. Um, you can also, um, what's the what's the term on Ravelry? Is it friend or follow? Whatever it is on Ravelry, <laughs> you can also find me over there. Um, my name is still Alidi Knits 2 over on Ravelry, although I'm thinking about changing it, so again. <laughs> Uh, but I do uh, keep up with uh, using Ravelry to log my projects, uh, knitting, crocheting, spinning. Uh, I use the notes section to write in notes, um, link to patterns, and things like that. So uh, if you use Ravelry, you can also um, follow me or friend me over there <laughs> as well. Um, I am standing for today's episode. I don't know if you can notice. I'm moving a little bit more. Uh, I've been sitting all day in front of my computer, and I just need to stand up for a little bit to give my back a break from sitting. So I hope this is okay. I hope you don't find my uh, movement here where I shift my weight a little bit. I hope you don't find that too distracting if... If you do or you don't, let me know down in the comments below just so I'm aware of <laughs> what that's like. Uh, and if you don't notice, that's cool as well. Um, yeah, so I'm going to take you through, uh, first of all, what I finished in the month of December. So at the end of each month, I do a monthly makes video. So this is the December makes video. So anything I finished in the month of December gets shown here and featured and talked about. Um, the patterns or resources um, that I use to get linked down in the description box below. So you can find those details there. Uh, somewhere in this video, either in the middle or towards the end, I will announce a giveaway. So each month I give something away. Uh, so stay tuned for what you can win and how to win it. Yes, exciting stuff. <laughs> uh, but before we get into that, I just want to share with you folks um, I live in the uh, Pacific Northwest. I'm in the greater Seattle area of Washington State. Um, and it is still, you know, pandemic times. I teach for a living. I teach uh, mathematics at a two-year college. Uh, and uh, just giving you folks an update. <laughs> um, yeah, so Omicron variant is going around, and so uh, I had plans to go back to campus all five days of the work week, starting in January, uh, but we are not doing that um, because of Omicron variant of COVID-19. So we are going back online which is why I was in front of the computer all day today. I put in a full eight hours on the computer uh, and it's still my winter break technically, <laughs> but these classes don't set themselves up. So uh, yeah, so I've been sitting in front of a computer screen for uh, a good eight hours with uh, very few breaks of getting up and resting my eyes uh, and my back. And so hence me standing for this recording. <laughs> <laughs> looking to a camera is not the same as looking at a computer screen, thankfully. So anyway, so that's what's going on. I will be back online for teaching at least for a month. And then uh, we may be able to go back to campus after that, or we may stay online. That is unknown at this time. So I am doing my best to not panic. 
yeah, even though that's what I really want to do is I want to panic, but you know, I feel like we've been on this crazy ride for a while now and you know, being surprised by things is something I'm getting used to now and I'm just I don't like it, but it is what it is. So, there we are. Thank goodness for my crafts to help keep me sane. So, let's look at what I was able to finish in the month of December. So, December, I do celebrate Christmas. Um, we did have family here for Christmas. Um, Christmas did not go as planned either. Things just seem to not go as planned lately. Um, but for Christmas, we had some surprises, twists and turns. One of those surprises being the weather. It actually snowed here in the Seattle area. Um, I live at a lower elevation. It doesn't usually snow at my house. I usually have to drive into the mountains to see snow, which is really cool. I grew up in Michigan and I love snow, so I don't have a problem with it. But with family driving in for, for Christmas, um, they didn't want to travel in a snowstorm. And I don't know that I would really want to go on a long road trip either in it. So that kind of changed some things. Uh, also, not everything was open during this weather. Um, we went to the shopping mall yesterday and a lot of the stores were closed. So we thought we were going to be able to pick up a few things and turns out not all the shops were even open. So yeah, <laughs> happy surprise in the snow. Not so happy it like shut things down, but yeah, again, it is what it is, right? I did make a snowman though. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, Christmas happened, some surprises there. I also planned on doing two different Advent activities which I did do <laughs> halfway consistently. Um, I think two advents was too many for me, to be honest. Um, so there was one advent that I'm, I made myself a little advent calendar and I did a weaving project with it. So each day I wove uh, three and a quarter inches onto a scarf. And that's going to be the first thing that I show you here in a little bit. Um, the other advent was uh, a mystery knit along uh, created by Imagine Landscapes. And she creates one of these uh, each December, it seems like, uh, where it's a mystery gnome knit along. So I also did that. Um, I found the weaving easy to keep up with. I did not find the knitting easy to keep up with on top of the weaving. So I chose to prioritize the weaving. I could have easily gone the other way. So I'm thinking maybe two advents is too much. Maybe I just need one next year. <laughs> one I can keep up with. Anyway, so I did pretty much keep up with those. I finished them on time. So let me grab them so that I can show you. So the first one is a scarf. <laughs> So I wove this scarf using leftover yarn from sock projects. So right here behind me on this pegboard, these are balls of yarn. Left, Most of them are leftovers from projects. Some of them are full skeins that I wound up on the ball winder and then didn't end up using, but I had already wound them up into balls. So I went ahead and put them on the pegboard, uh, as opposed to the storage over here where I just keep the skeins or balls as they arrived from the store or the market, wherever I got them. Anyway, so I stash dove from the pegboard and I did use up a lot of stuff from there, which was the objective, so mission accomplished. Uh, and I picked out a rainbow of colors. <laughs> So I put on the warp uh, neutral colors. So you can see here with the fringe, they were um, 
grays and black. So yeah, I did intend for the scarf to be wider. Get my ruler here. It is seven, seven and a half. Ooh, dropped it. like seven to seven and a half inches here wide. I did want it to be wider than that, but I didn't really have enough of the neutrals to do that. And I didn't want to break out a full skein of something for this project. The point was to use up leftovers. Anyway, so I said, well, that's all right. I'll just have a skinnier scarf, that's fine. So I, lined up the colors according to what I thought looked good in a type of rainbow. So a type of rainbow, sort of a rainbow. So following um, the Roy G. Biv order, um, I started with, you know, kind of the red tones and moved into the oranges. I don't really have like a yellow, but so kind of went into like greens and then blues and purples. And I love it. I think it's so cool. I also really like that. Um, so I tried to do like all self striping yarn in this project. Uh, and I think it looks really neat with the way I did the warp. <laughs> um, so it's kind of plaid, but not really. So all the yarns are self-striping except for one. This one right here is some of my hand-dyed variegated yarn. But see, I have such a small amount left and I was at like 23 colors. <laughs> And I thought it felt weird for an advent to stop at 23. So I was like, I just need one more color to, to get me to 24 at least. And then 25 can be me taking the scarf on the, off the loom. So I threw that one in there. But yeah, this thing is, even though it's not very wide, it is really long. So it's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's really cool. So I still need to photograph this scarf and I'd like to do it before the snow melts. I think that would be nice. But yeah, all the ends uh, I wove in as I, as I wove it. <laughs> yes, seriously. So I wove in the start and, and wove and then at the end of the color I wove it in and I left the ends hanging until I took the whole scarf off the loom, I gave it a soak and a dry, and then I clipped all the ends. So it is, it is finished. There, there's nothing else to do except take pictures. Um, the only thing I wish I would have done uh, was track my yardage somehow. So I, did not uh, weigh any of these before putting it into this project. I, I have nothing. So, I mean, what I could do, and maybe I should, what I could do is weigh this project and kind of use like, there's a lot of Patton's Croy in here, so I could go with a Patton's Croy kind of um, grams to yardage ratio that could work. I think I'll do that. Uh, Cause I know a lot of yardage went into this and I'd really like to count it for my annual total of yardage. Anyway, I love this project. I really do enjoy weaving and this was super fun. I got to use up scrap yarns that are just decorating my wall, which I love decorating my wall, but you can see it's getting kind of crowded on there. It needed a little thinning out. So I made a scarf and I'm, I love it. So my other advent project was a knitting one. And this was the mystery knit along 
by Imagine Landscapes. And again, I will have that pattern link below in the description box. Um, now that the mystery knit along is over, uh, what she does is uh, she puts, condenses all the clues back down into a traditionally formatted pattern. So um, you can just see the whole pattern all in one document um, instead of having to look at like 20 different documents with it portioned out for clues, <laughs> uh, which is nice. Anyway, so uh, to be honest, <laughs> When I started this knit along, I wasn't super happy with how the gnome was turning out. Like, I was pretty disappointed halfway through thinking, I don't know if I like this pattern. I don't know if I like the colors I chose. I, I don't know if I like the proportions. Like, this thing is just weird. I don't know that I like it. And then it got to a point where it started coming together, and now I'm totally in love with it. So... I don't know if you did this knit along, if you felt that same way, but like, I just wasn't sure what the heck we were making and how big it was going to be. Um, now this gnome is a decent size. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love this gnome. The tassel on the top, the hat pocket. Oh my gosh, the beard is adorable. And then... The guy has a backpack with a friend in it. Like, what? So you get a bonus second little gnome. It even has this cute little loop on the top. Basically a Christmas ornament. <laughs> I mean, what the heck? So, yeah, I was quite worried when... We got the, the bag was like one of the early clues. And so, you know, we didn't have the hat or the beard or anything at that point. And I was thinking, why the heck am I making a bag? Maybe we had the beard. But I was like, what, what the heck is this thing going to be? So I was getting kind of worried about what I had gotten myself into. But now that it's all come together... I love it. It's so cute. <laughs> so, yes, it's finished. No, I did not weigh any of my yarns ahead of time to try to track the yardage in any way. So, in that respect, I failed on my advents. Not being able to track them, but, yeah. Super cute. I love it. It's going in my gnome collection. I now have two, because I've done this... Uh, mystery knit along two years now 2020 and 2021 <laughs> so to keep on with um, I guess knitting <laughs> uh, I have a half finished object um, so I have a half finished pair of socks and this is out of hand spun yeah uh, so I finished one sock so this is yarn that I spun up in was it November? Might have been November, October, November, something like that. Um, so if you go back to the October or November makes videos, you can see that hand spun yarn. Um, but yeah, I was going to try to do a pattern uh, with this yarn and it, it just, it just wasn't coming through. It was really it was really sad. So I just did uh, one by one ribbing. Um, and I think it just looks super polished, which is nice uh, with hand spun. So yeah, this is the one sock that's finished. And I still have a lot left over. Um, yeah. <laughs> And I started the second sock. So the second sock is started here on this ball. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. So yeah, this is, I love this yarn so very much. 
Um, I will link down below in the description box uh, where I purchased the fiber. Um, the fiber is delicious. It is so nice to spin with. It was really easy to spin. It's working up beautifully in the socks. I'm excited to see how it wears. Um, I'm so happy with it at this point. So yeah, it's half finished. I was hoping to finish it, but you know, that didn't happen and that's okay. That'll just be my first finished object for 2022, right? <laughs> no biggie. Okay, I'm gonna show you my my other active knitting work in progress before I shift to spinning. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I have this sweater that I'm working on and it's going super slowly. <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing because it's, it's quite ridiculous. Uh, I stopped in the middle of a row. Um, yeah, so this is going to be difficult to show you. But, yeah, so it is a bottom-up cardigan uh, that's knit flat, so it's not connected here. And that's my progress, which is further than last time. I have a progress marker here. So where this stitch marker is is about where I was last time I showed this to you. So I've, I've doubled it in size, which is pretty good. Uh, still not up to the arm separation yet, you know, but um, I do love, I love the fabric that this is creating. I think it looks really cool. And look at that, I think it's going to look really nice with my skin tone and my glasses and everything. I did kind of struggle with picking out the colors, but I think I think I settled on some good colors here. So I'm really happy with it. I, I am happy with the uh, object that I'm creating. I do love that, but the process is not my favorite uh, because of the yarn management. So um, the yarn is getting, because there's three, there are three yarns used to create this fabric. And as you can imagine, they're getting twisted and tangled. And so I do have to stop and you know, untwist them before I can proceed, and that is slowing me down. So the pr the process of knitting this sweater is not my favorite. It's not my least favorite, but it's annoying. I would rate it as annoying, okay? It's kind of, it's not offensive. It's not like, right, and it's not difficult. It's just kind of annoying. <laughs> Uh, but otherwise, I, I like the pattern and I absolutely love the result. So for me, is the annoying effort worth it? Yes. It's just kind of, it's just going to be a slower knit. So that's what it is. Uh, but yeah, the pattern is called Mellow by Camilla Vaught. And I will also have that pattern linked down below in the description box. It is a pattern I paid for, so I'm not going to give away uh, the process of how it is created. That's part of the pattern. Uh, but it is good to know, you know, getting into a project, like, is the process going to be something you find enjoyable? And when I have to pause to untangle yarn, I don't find that enjoyable. I find that an annoying task and I do my best to try to avoid that. <laughs> That's why I learned uh, how to knit with my other hand, uh, so that 
I could use both hands and not have to tangle yarn. But now I have three yarns to manage, and I don't have three hands. I don't know if you knew that. I only have two. <laughs> but yeah, so it is coming along. It's just coming along at a slower rate than I was hoping for. So that has me kind of bummed out. But if I just tell myself, you know what, that's fine. Now I know that is part of the process and it is going to slow me down. That's okay, right? Acknowledge it and move on uh, so that this project doesn't die in my project bag. <laughs> I do actually want this sweater. I really want it. So yeah, we're making progress. It's just kind of slow. All right, so into spinning territory. Um, did I get any spinning done this month? No, nothing is finished. I did spin just a little bit more on my Turkish drop spindle, but it's not even worth mentioning, even though I just mentioned it. Just the tiniest amount. But what I did finish in the realm of spinning is um, some fiber prep. So I have way too much wool in my closet. And I need to really go through it. I've been collecting it. I really need to go through it. So I'm working through some, oh shoot, what's the name of it? Carrie Hill. I'm working through some Carrie Hill fiber, a whole big bag that I purchased a year ago. And I finally got through washing it uh, over the summer into fall. And now I'm into the prep portion, right? So dyeing, combing, carding, all that great stuff. So, I, um, previously I had shown you, uh, some of this Carrie Hill I had hand spun and knit, um, that pumpkin out of back in October. So I'm using that same fiber. Now for that pumpkin, what I did is I combed the fiber out first because I was trying to get the, there's a lot of, uh, vegetable matter, VM in the fiber. So I was trying to comb a lot of that out. Grass and thorny things and yeah, all that great stuff. Dirt, of course. Trying to get it out of the wool and then I dyed it. And it did kind of mat the fiber down. You know, it wasn't as fluffy after that. So I thought, you know what, this time let me dye the fiber first and then comb it and see what that is like. So that is what I have done. And I have, here we go. So I did save a little bit and partially because this color didn't come out as rich as I wanted it to, so I saved it. But I found it interesting. Um, so dyeing the fiber after it's been washed but not combed or carded, um, that it really didn't take the dye evenly. The Shetland I did this to a couple of years ago did seem to take the dye pretty evenly throughout. But here you can see um, the ends of the fiber took it a lot and then not so much near the cut end. right? I found that interesting. So um, this batch of green didn't come out as dark as I was hoping. It's really light on most of it. And after combing it out and stuff, it just looks like this really light green. Guess what? I'm spinning a whole bunch of light green on my Turkish drop spindle. I'm tired of looking at light green. So, <laughs> so I did put it in... Um, for another go round with with some more dye anyway so um i found this photograph of like quintessential pacific northwest what i would call quintessential pacific northwest um now that i live up here i you know like i'm oh gosh i've always loved coming and visiting here to go camping and hiking and and traveling um, and living here is even more fun, right? So anyway, my thought was to come up with a nice project, a nice spin, with this sort of Pacific Northwest 
color palette. So we've got neutral. So uh, these are gallon size bags. Um, I accidentally purchased gallon size bags that aren't the zip top. Silly me. They're the kind with twist ties. Um, I meant to get zip top ones for the kitchen so we could put things in the freezer, whatever. So this is now basically a box of bags for the craft room. <laughs> so um, they, I think they look like cotton candy bags, especially with the light blue. <laughs> I think they're super fun but yeah so this is a gallon size bag each of these has two ounces of fiber in them so we've got uh, natural undyed we have a nice light blue then we've got like a medium green I guess kind of medium we've got Oh no! A dark green and black. <laughs> so basically, um, think of. Here we go. Think of uh, Rocky Mountain with trees on it. Okay with a beautiful blue sky and fog. Yeah. <laughs> so let me put this back in this container. Basically, that's what we're working with. So this is going to fall out. Anyway, so <laughs> the entire succession of project is not finished, right? But I finished this phase of prepping the fiber. So now what I have to do is decide, because I've got 10, 10 ounces of fiber there, um, I have to decide what I'm gonna make out of it so that I can kind of back plan. Um, I was thinking some kind of vest um, so then I can kind of backtrack like, okay, so what kind of yarn and then what kind of prep? So do I want to do a fractal spin? Do I want to do some blending on the, on the blending board? Do I want to do Rolex? Is striping? Like, what do I want to do? So I need to sit down and think about that, but I wanted to show you that I have the fiber prepped. So I'm going to be doing... Um, a video where I kind of log this from, you know, fiber prep to finished project. Um, and you'll get updates along the way in these little monthly videos. So I'm really excited. Uh, something creative and I need to think about kind of a long-term project and uh, it just brings me a lot of joy. I think it's time for acquisitions. <laughs> I did acquire some things this month. Uh, one of the things is a big bag from Hobby. <laughs> so I have been seeing ads for Hobby for a while, and I finally caved and jumped on one of the sales. Uh, I think it was around Black Friday time. Yeah. So I just want to show you what I brought into the stash. And maybe I'll get back into logging stash on Ravelry. I don't know. Um, yeah, one of the first things is this lovely. I mean, honestly, the camera doesn't do it justice because it has this beautiful uh, shine to it. Yeah. Uh, and I love this. Look at this. Easy start. They put a little sticker on the end coming out of the center so it doesn't get lost. It's kind of nice. Uh, but yeah, this is, what is this? Twister, which is a cotton acrylic blend. I thought I could get it to focus. That's fine. 
Uh, cotton acrylic blend, and this is uh, 250 grams, 1,000 meters. Um, yeah, I don't. I can't remember what I was thinking of making out of that, but it's going to be beautiful. Uh, here is some more Twister of the same, almost same variety, uh, except it's got sparkle. So this is cotton, acrylic, and then the polyester is the sparkle. So it's 53% cotton, 43% acrylic, and 4% polyester. <laughs> yeah. Do these have colorway names? I think they have colorway names on the website. But on here, it's just telling me a number. Yeah. <laughs> that blue is amazing. I love that. Uh, and then I got, let's see, is this a oh, more cotton acrylic? Honolulu. Oh, yeah. And then I got one. Um, oh, this is 100% cotton. The grays. And then, oh yeah, here's, okay, this might be the last of the cotton. I got a set um, that I'd love to do um, towels. So this is 100% cotton. This is 8-4 cotton. And I love these colors. It pretty much matches our, like, the paint colors in the house. It's nice. Uh, and then this one, the label broke, but they did have some uh, sock yarn. So this is Moonwalk. Is seventy percent, seventy-four percent wool, twenty-four percent polyamide, and two percent polyester. It is smart sparkle. Um. Yeah, it has a colored number. But yeah, take the tag off. It's going to stripe. And it's going to look really cool. And I got another one of those here. So they kind of coordinate. So I could mix and match or something. I think they'll be really nice socks. Uh, yep. And then I got a couple of solid color, again, for socks, 75, 25 wool nylon. Um, they were really running out of colors uh, of this variety. I think they're discontinuing this yarn. Um, but I got colors that I find difficult to get other places. Um, so I can get neutrals to go with these or whatever. But yeah, nice bright blue and then like this peachy orange. Yeah. And that's it. We're at the bottom of the bag. <laughs> and now I see my receipt. And my free throw-in item, which is a seam ripper. I ordered a bunch of yarn. Thanks for my sewing thing. Anyway, yeah, so that's um, what I made, what I have in progress, and new stash I have acquired uh, for the month of December. So it's been a, a somewhat productive month. I mean, all things considered. We had the end of a, a term at school, Christmas, a snowstorm. Um, news about having to go back online again. So it's been, it's been a lot. <laughs> so for the giveaway, first let's talk about what you can win and then let's talk about how you can win it. So for this month's giveaway, uh, for the month of January, what I'm going to do is, or the month of December, 
For the giveaway, uh, this time what we're going to do is a digital pattern. So the winner will be randomly chosen, uh, and that winner will win a pattern of their choosing. So basically, uh, I'm giving away any pattern off of Ravelry uh, up to a $10 value um, and that's US dollars. So you can choose any pattern. It doesn't have to be one of mine. It could be a pattern that you've been wanting to get for a while and just haven't or something new that pops up. Um, and so that's that's what you're going to get. So it'll be a real quick item to deliver uh, and it won't be a physical item. So, um, you know, if you're having any concerns about uh, well, COVID-19 and all of its variants and, and everything like that. Um, for this giveaway, let's just do a digital item. Uh, I don't know about you, but I could always use more patterns. So it's still a giveaway. <laughs> uh, so what you need to do to win uh, this prize is put a comment down below on this video. So on the December Makes video right here down below, write a comment about any crafting goals that you have for this upcoming year. Um, you know, do you do uh, Make Nine is a popular one. Have you picked out nine items to create this year? Um, do you make goals about things to learn or try, um, new things to do? Uh, you know, how do you, do you total up your yardage for the year and try to do more and more each year, kind of like what I do? Um, you know, what, what, what kind of goals or plans do you have for 2022 with your crafting? Uh, I'm curious. So you can be as specific or as vague as you desire. Maybe this is something you haven't really sat down and thought about yet. And so you're not really sure what your plans are. Um, this giveaway is going to be open for the month of January. So what I will do is give you a month the whole month of January, uh, and I will announce the winner in the January Makes episode, okay? So you're going to comment here on the December Makes episode. Uh, you'll get a month to think about it and comment, and then I'll announce the winner on the January Makes episode. I hope that makes sense. If not, let me know. <laughs> Uh, and what you're you're going for is a pattern prize, and so it can be any pattern off of uh, Ravelry. All right, folks, that's all I have. Um, coming up next on the channel will be my end of the year uh, totals for 2021. Uh, you know what I created, kind of a look back episode and a look forward episode. So kind of what are my plans for 2022? So you can look forward to that coming up soon here on the channel. So until then, uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. Bye everyone.